She's fine.
afternoon. All of you, but I felt a lot of mercy if they were all lined up on the left hand side. So this is your parents for this seven. She's not feeling well this morning. Uh, we are very uh, proud of you here at Ebenezer. We'll come up each devotion Sunday and recite some of the Bible verses. So when the need arises, they will, uh, the Lord will bring it back to their remembrance. Uh, as they get older and older, the times are going to come. We're going through trials and tribulations. Uh, the Lord will bring those scriptures back to the remembrance. We thank the parents for working with them, and we are very proud of each of you. Boys will join in with you and sing one stanza of Jesus working on my behalf.
ask you to grab those Bibles, please, and open them to the book of 1 John. We're so blessed here at Ebenezer to have wonderful young people who just love the Lord. Book of 1 John, chapter 4, Route 119. Wasn't that fun? 1 <laughs> John, chapter 4. I want you to go ahead and focus in on that 12th verse. We've been working our way through this chapter. Just amazing. God has been revealing to us. While you're looking for that and your heads are bowed, we ask you to please go on a word of prayer with me. Dear Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. And you're just awesome. I'm amazed at you, your spirit, just how you move in various ways and you touch our hearts. Now, Lord, I pray that as this service has gone forth, that someone's been touched by you to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ, your Son, is Lord, Father, and you've raised him from the dead. Thank you that you're the only one that can save. Draw them close to that cross. Now, Father, I'm incapable of realizing that more and more of teaching and preaching properly within myself. You know, I've got hang ups, I've got sins and issues. Would you forgive me of my sins? And cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, I welcome your Holy Spirit yet again. I sense that he's already here. Holy Spirit, would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth? Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Dear Lord, I ask you to give my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Thank you for that anointing. Some of us have pressed our way here. Some of us are struggling, Lord. Some of us are excited about who you are. We need you to speak to that tender part of us where all permanent change takes place. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First John chapter 4. I want you to look at him on that 12th verse. The apostle John, the beloved disciple, he writes, No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Verse 12 again. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Uh, I want to speak from a subject today. Does God live in you? Does God live in you? Could you look at your neighbor today? Some of you just kind of looked past your neighbor and you sit right beside them. You touch shoulders and didn't even look at them. And some of you married you didn't even look at each other. So if you could uh, just grab your neighbor, uh, grab by their hand because sometimes they're pretending that they're writing the title down. They should be finished by now. <laughs> they should be finished. Give them time. Give them time to finish putting the whole scripture down. First John chapter 4. Verse 12, say, neighbor, neighbor, I have a question to ask you. Does God, Does God live, live in you? In you. Does God live in you? I, I tell you, when we started out in this chapter, I didn't think that um, it would affect me as much as it has. But uh, even talking about the spirit of the Antichrist, I found out that week after preaching the sermon uh, that demons are real. I knew that they were real, but uh, they are very real and they will do all that they can do to hinder us from praising and lifting up the Lord. Uh, we found out that there are false teachers that are in the church, uh, uh, erroneous doctrines that are being put out, and people are going astray, uh, not following the real and true God. Uh, but John uh, exhorts to the church to be pulled back to Jesus the Christ, the real and true and living Lord. Uh, remember, he leaves that point. He goes from the false prophets, that antichrist. And then he lets us know how we can truly know that we are saved. And we talked about loving one another. We found out that the love has to be on the inside of us. And it separates us from the world. Uh, we were challenged in that because we realized no matter what the enemy does to us, because love is on the inside, we win. Uh, and that was a great reality to me to know that no matter what we're going through, if we got the love and God is love that we're going to find out even more today, that we win. 
uh, remember the last part of that uh, chapter or that section that we preached on the 11th verse. John said, the love, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Uh, we were challenging our thought pattern, not just to come here on Sunday or whenever we come and, and just praise Him here, but to act out that love, to uh, care about our brothers and our sisters, to invite them over our home or go out to eat, uh, to help them or to assist them or to even give them our coat if they don't have one. But notice this, John, uh, also, he was there with Jesus. He touched Jesus. He talked to Jesus. He saw the miracles, signs, and wonders. But he gives us this profound scripture in verse 12. He says, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. What John is referring, he's not referring to the Christ that came in the flesh as God, but he's talking about the Father of the Old Testament. Now, some of you theologians, you can remember there were glimpses of God. Uh, there were times prophets were allowed to see the backside of him or to look up the semblance of his glory or even a theophany of the type, but no one has seen God in his full glory. Uh, this is an awesome experience because if we were to look at the Father in His complete glory, then we would fall dead because of the sin that resides in us. So John makes this statement. He says, no one has seen God at any time. But he does an if statement. This is a powerful statement. He's kind of letting us know we can't see His full glory, but we can still get a glimpse of Him even as we're living now. And, and this excites me because he says, if we we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. Does God live in you? What John is saying is that we can't look at the full glory, but if we love one another, then God actually moves in on the inside of us. He abides or lives there. Now, this is amazing to me because we know that God cannot be encapsulated, but what he's done through his son, Jesus Christ, he's given us a way that he can actually come and live on the inside of us. And we know that by our actions. We know that by our fruit. We even know that by us loving one another. Some of you, if you are real today, can understand if it hadn't been for God on the inside of me, I would love like I should love. You know, some of you, some of you can remember the past before Jesus the Christ, the anointed, came in your life. You could really cut it off. It wasn't about love. It was about lust and what you wanted. You were nice to people so you could get what you wanted from them. But when they became less useful for you, you could just cut it off. You were a cold lover. There ought to be some amens in the house. You were. You just went from one person to another. And people actually talked about you, how mean and hateful you were. But somehow the grace and the mercy of God got a hold of you. Somehow it got in your heart and changed you from the inside out. And sometimes you'll have flashbacks of your own way, but now something tender has come up on the inside of you. Have you ever got upset with yourself because you couldn't be like you used to be? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. There's some folks in the house. You used to hate, and you love hate. You can do it real good, but now that Jesus has come on the inside of you, it's hard to hold hate in your heart anymore because God is so powerful. Love one another. God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us or matured in us. Now this is an awesome reality. What God is saying through John, he's saying that when I get inside of you, and the question is does God live in you, I'm going to mature in you. I'm not satisfied with you just being the way you are, but I want you to become more like me. This is, this is concerning me in the church because sometimes the longer we're in the church, the worse we get. Mm -hmm. be some amens and how I've been in church all my life. I realize this. Some of the folks that you think should be holy can be the less sanctified ones. Uh, it doesn't matter. They can have gray hair. They can testify, jump all over the place, but they'll hurt your feelings in a hard moment. But I'm so glad for the real saints in the house that realize the longer I walk with him, the more I talk with him, there must be a change. There, there must be a tenderness that comes up, love that goes to my brothers and my sisters, verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. 
Now, that spirit in New King James Version is capitalized at the end. What it's saying is that God has actually given us a portion of his spirit to reside in us. Now, there's been a misnomer in the church that we think that to have the spirit is just to shout around. And that's great. I love to shout and be excited about the Lord. But that is not a nomenclature of saying that you got the spirit. Because I've seen folks that hate God, but they can go to a concert and they can jump around and shout and fall out uh, under their spirit. So, so we've got to make sure that we define what, what he's talking about here. He's saying that if that love is on the inside of us, God is abiding in us. He has given us a portion of his spirit that actually walks with us every day. A, a spirit that, that we know that God is right there. Some of us can feel him like a hand on our shoulder. Uh, Jeremiah said it was like fire shut up in our bones. We can feel a movement, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Have you ever just been quiet and going through something? Thing. And you know what? There was no shout there. Actually, there were tears coming from your eyes, but you just felt the warmness on the inside of you. You knew that God had saved you and delivered you. I tell you, that's good news to know that God is with you. There have been times in my life that I was in places that I really couldn't shout because it wasn't politically correct, but I was jumping up all on the inside of me, praising the Lord. Why? Because God has put his spirit on the inside of me. He's given a portion, look at verse 14, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Now what he's saying is no one has seen the Father at any time, but when we get glimpses of God's spirit of love on the inside of us, we can say I've seen him. Now I know that's ironic and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on both sides of my mouth here, but he's saying you haven't seen him in the fullness of his glory, but when you see a brother or sister walking in love, you can know that God is on the inside of them. Please, please understand what he's saying here, that I cannot even act in love truly without God being on the inside of me. I, I, I can't care for you the way that I should care for you unless God is on the inside of me. Uh, my wife tells me often as we go through from time to time, you just need to go pray. Now, now I used to take offense to that. What do you mean I need to go pray? I'll go pray when I want to pray. But what she was saying is, if I can get you closer to God, he can do more than I can do for you. Because if you can get in your prayer closet, there ought to be some men that say amen in the house. God can change you, and then when he gets more inside of you, you can love the way you should love. That does God live in you? Now, now look at this. He, he brings this to a climax, verse 14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. What he's saying that that we're all tangled up in him if we confess, not just confessing with our mouth, but we really believe that he's Lord of our lives. Now, some people say, you know what, I can get to God any way I want to get to. But John lets us know the only way you can get this love and this spirit is through his son, Jesus the Christ. Why? Because God sent his son from heaven to earth. God manifested in the flesh to save us and deliver us. And the only way I can truly experience the love on the inside of me is to know who Jesus is. Does God live in you? The, the, the question is today, some people are pretending. They're pretending like they know God and it's bigger than it's just clapping your hands or even doing some good deeds from time to time. Do you know the devil can do that? But to be changed is the significance that we walk in our lives. We're not talking about perfection. We mess up from time and time again. But every day should get sweeter and sweeter than the day before. You should be able to look back at your life from last year and say, you know what? I thank God that he's progressing me, that he's growing me. I'm not what I used to be. There ought to be some testimonies in the house. Now, now see, some of us come from different levels. Some of you, you were street people and, and you had to struggle. Some of us were brought up in Christian families. So don't think just because you were brought in a Christian family, you're better than someone else. You just don't know what they went through. The fact is we're all on the same level because it's by grace that we're saved, not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Isn't it amazing, even in the church, and we've got to be careful of this, we dress up and we look nice, but someone can come in that does not look like us, and we can semblance put them down. But please understand, we can't judge them on that fact, because the fact is, they can be more holy than we are. The fact is, we don't know the struggles that they went through to even get to this place. 
place. And sometimes we forget where God has brought us from. The, the Father has sent His Son as the Savior of the world, and He said, He who, who confesses Him, the Son of God, God abides in Him, and He in God. This is a beautiful picture. If Jesus is in me, God the Father is all around me. He's abiding in me, and we're all tangled up together. Now, this is a beautiful picture. I, I was thinking about some semblance. It's like a sponge in water. If you put the sponge in the water, the water gets inside the sponge, but yet the sponge still contains what a sponge is. God is saying, I want to get so close and entangled in you, you can't really tell where you end and I begin. I, I, I want people to see the love of me in you so much that when they get near you, all of a sudden they'll know something's different about that person. There ought to be some eight hands in the house. He said, Pastor, that is not possible. They, 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 they can't tell that I'm different by just getting close to me. Well, you tell Jesus that because there was a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 long years going through. You remember her? Then she went to doctors, and the more she went to doctors, the worse they got. So she said, you know what? If I can just get close to Jesus, I, 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 don't, I don't really, I can't touch his flesh because, you know what, I've got a bleeding component. But if I can get touched, I think something's going to happen. And she snuck up behind him. She wasn't able to touch his skin, but she just brushed, brushed up against the hem of his garment, just the skirt of his robe. And all of a sudden, there was so much anointing that was on him, it flowed over in her. And guess what? She got delivered. What? Wouldn't that be a great experience in the church if there would be some real folks that would get so close to God? We wouldn't need no people pushing folks down on the anointing. But just because the anointing is so big and so great, I ain't even got to touch it anymore. But God is just moving from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Does God live in you? Look at verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. Here we go again. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Notice John goes backwards and forth. God is love. Love is in us because God is in us. He abides in us. He's tangling us up. He's asking us the question. They ask that question again. Does God live in you? And I want you to begin to look at your life and I want you to ask yourself, is Jesus a part of me? Is God residing in me? I realize there are some struggles, and you may say, Pastor, I've got to make sure that I know. What is this on the inside of you that pushes you to care for folks even when you don't want to care for people? That's how you know. In a relationship, a husband and wife, when you fall out, but yet you can go back to them and say I'm sorry even when you don't want to say I'm sorry. You, you, you know something has changed. Uh, on your job, when, when someone treats you bad and you used to put that person in their place, but now you begin to pray and intercede for that folk, you know something's on the inside of you. When you're driving your car and someone has road rage and cuts you off and could have caused all kinds of traumatic issues to your family, but instead of cussing them out, there ought to be some amens in the house. You gravitate to yourself and begin to pray and think about the goodness of Jesus. And then you know that God lives in you. But if we were honest with ourselves today, some of us have come to the point of realizing God does not really reside in us. That we've come to the point of realizing that there's so many struggles and so many issues within us. We wonder if God can save us or deliver us out of where we are today. I want to give you an encouraging word to let you know from John the Apostle and the word that God is still faithful in spite of you. I want to let you know that in spite of how mean you are, amen, how hateful you are, amen, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're carrying in your heart, I serve a big God. I serve a God that can divide a red sea. I serve a God that can actually put the heavens and earth in their place. I serve a God that can do more than enough in every situation. Is God in you? All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised him from the dead and the scriptures say you will be saved. Oh, I was thinking, how do I sum this up as he's talked about God abiding in us? And I thought about the hymn for number 102. Alfred Ackley put it like this. He said, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I 
know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. There ought to be some amens in the house. Listen to the second verse. He said, in all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, any weary people in the house, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the storm and blast. The day of his appearing, you know what? It's going to come at last. Rejoice, rejoice, oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving and so good and kind. You know how I know it? Because he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Are there any amens in the house? He lives. He lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. I know he got up on that third, that third day with all power and glory. Early that Sunday morning. You say, Pastor, how do you know it? Because he changed me on the inside. I know it because I can feel him every now and then. I know him because I can lift up my head and say hallelujah. I know him because I met him in a sick room. I know him as a lawyer. I know him as a deliverer. I know him as a freedom rider. I know him as a king of kings and a lord of lords. I know him as the one that sits high and he looks low. Are there any people in the house that know that know that Jesus Christ lives today? They know that God resides on the inside of you. When you think of what he's done for you and how he saved you and how he's delivered you, he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Would you come to your feet, please? He asked me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Father, thank you. Thank you for moving on, John. To let us know those who are called on you, Father, you actually live in us. That we can see glimpses of you. As our brothers and sisters love one another. As we suffer for you. As we give up the things that are so important to us. That others may be blessed. Most importantly, God, when we see changed lives. Thank you for living in us. Now, Father, I pray. As we think about the cross of Calvary. Think about all the suffering that you did for us. But the fact that you got up that third day were all power. Lord, would you search this place? Maybe there's someone that asked the question, do you live in me? And they said, I can't find you. But Father, help them to confess you right now. To repent of their sins. And to call on the name of Jesus. Father, only you're the one that can save them. Thank you for your power and your spirit. And that you live. You live today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask our ministers to come around, our intercessors, our prayer warriors, as they come to the altar today. Man, it's here at 1.30 today.